Hello, Timmy Nafso here with the Embedded Podcast at Fortis. We are filming from Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay at the Electronic Transaction Association. Enjoy the series as we interview thought leaders about all things payments, the past, the present, and the future. Hello, Timmy Nafso here with Embedded at the ETA with Jody Kelly, CEO, Chief Executive Officer of the Electronic Transaction Association. As CEO, Jody serves as the voice of and representative for the innovative and dynamic payments ecosystem and directs the international public policy, industry affairs, and educational activities of the ETA Welcome, Jody Kelly. Thank you. It's awesome to be here. Thank you for joining today. It means a lot for somebody that's been in the payment industry for quite some time, starting off in the early 2000s, 2002, 2003, selling payments, um, and then co-founding Fortis uh, years later. And here I am at the ETA. And uh, it's such an important event uh, for all of us that are here to understand what was, what is, and what is going to be. So thank you so much for all you do. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. That is awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into the payments world and becoming CEO of ETA? Yeah, I can. So, uh, you know, mine is not a linear uh, story. So I'm a lawyer by training um, and I was at a big law firm for a long time, about a dozen years partnered a law firm and uh, decided I you know, wanted to make a move, uh, went into financial services, then made the move to a trade association. So representing an industry and the industry was software. Uh, and then I got a call about this role. And it, it was, a, it was just a, a really interesting moment because I never really thought about payments as an industry. You know, like so many people, I think I, I make payments all the time. I use my cards all the time. Um, but then I started, you know, diving into like this industry and what it does um, and just realized it's fascinating. There's so much possibility. And the idea of leading the organization that represents this industry, like at this moment, was just too good to pass up. Uh, and so that's what brought me here four and a half years ago. And there's no place I'd rather be. That is awesome. Yeah, my, I think my dad said when we started in the payment industry, is this legal, what you all are doing? <laughs> <laughs> Pennies a transaction when you swipe them. Um, but yeah, certainly it, it is. And it's been interesting to see the evolution of payments of where it was. So four years ago, even, I think the world has changed quite a bit. Yeah. from four years ago. What would you say from a landscape perspective, what significant changes have you witnessed as it relates to the payment industry? Yeah, you know, I, I would say this from a, from a very macro perspective. You know, one of the things that attracted me to this industry when I, when I entered was, you know, I kind of looked at what was happening in payments, you know, I, you know, unburdened by what had happened before, right? I stepped into it new and, and what I saw was this really interesting kind of innovation cycle, right? So you have all this technology being deployed um, in new and different ways in the payment space, and you have consumers engaging with that technology and loving it, right? Yes. Loving speed, loving convenience, loving, you know, loving frictionless experiences, which we all talk about. Um, but as they love it, they want more, right? They want more, they want different, they want better, they want faster yet and the technology responds. And so I saw an industry, you know, that was meeting that macro demand in really innovative ways and, and just the cycle of innovation that was spinning, you know? Absolutely. And, um, and I think, as I think about some of the underlying trends, they're all driven by that, right? They're driven by the realization that technology can make this experience better in so many ways, including more secure, and a real demand for that to happen. Um, and, and, I, and I've certainly seen that during the four years that I've been here, um, and we're gonna keep seeing that, there's no question. Yeah, no, that's awesome. You know, I think that one of the things that we're thinking about as well is, with change comes challenges. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, there's a ton of change happening. And we're talking about payments and banking and financial technology. Yes. I would imagine the burden of carrying that kind of regulation portion of this is a, a big part that having a voice like the ETA is what helps remove those barriers. We could talk a little bit about 
the regulatory activity that the ETA plays for the industry. Yeah, and, there, and that you know, it's a really great point, and and it's an important point because you know, look, if you look at our membership, you know, we span the breadth of the largest of the large companies in the space all the way to the brand new, you know, startups. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks, particularly folks who are starting a business, they're not thinking about what's happening in Washington. Right. They're certainly not thinking about what's happening in state capitals. Exactly. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, if what happens in Congress, in a state capital, or at the regulatory level, um, it, you know, if it goes awry, it can really affect the way that that people do business. Yeah. Um, what we do is legal. You should tell your dad. Um, but yes. like you, you got to make sure that that legal environment, that regulatory environment, allows that continued innovation to happen. Um, and and it it sounds easy, and it's not. Um, you know, just a, a couple of examples. You know, as we look uh, like forward, uh, not a lot's going to happen in Congress in the short term. Um, but Congress has been debating a stablecoin bill for a long time. Yeah. You know, our industry is experimenting with the use of digital currencies and how you think about it. Um, and, uh, and it's for industry to decide what yeah. works for business. But you've got to have the right backdrop because if you don't, you know, things that are people are exploring, they might not be able to actually deploy. Exactly. Um, the CFPB, for example, is looking at open banking. You know, that has the potential to affect things like account to account payments in the future. Um, and AI, uh, which, of course, you can't talk about payments without talking about. In fact, yes, you can't exactly. talk about anything without talking about AI. True. Um, but, you know, Congress is looking hard at it. And, you know, our member companies are experiencing or experimenting with hundreds and hundreds of use cases for AI. Yes. But if you get the regulatory backdrop wrong and things are prohibited, you know, then a lot of that works comes to a screeching halt. So a lot of what we do is uh, engaging with policymakers and educating them. Think about it. If I didn't know what payments was before yeah. I took this job, you know, your average member of Congress certainly doesn't know. And your average state legislator really, really doesn't know. These are mostly part-time jobs. Yeah. Folks, you know, trying, uh, you know, frequently to do the right thing, um, sure. but, but without really understanding the kind of impact they could make. Yeah, the, the breakdown of that and articulation, I would imagine, to this audience, educating them is hyper important because the easier thing to do is that looks complicated, let's not change. Stay yeah. exactly where we are. But the ETA is there to make sure that we are articulating that and getting that ahead of there. One question that is interesting, you brought up that, you know, it moves slow, the Congress moves slow. How far into the future are we planning and playing right now from ETA's perspective? So that is a great question um, and a really important question. Um, and before I dive into it, I should just say, it's also important to know that as slowly as Congress moves, the states move really quickly. So with Congress, you know, we are looking, we have a long-term view, both in terms of relationships, but also in terms of issues. And it's why we spend so much time with our members. Like, I want to understand your business yeah. so I can think about what are the things that are going to matter to you as you deploy products and solutions down the road, what kind of privacy issues are gonna to matter to you? Yes. How are you thinking about deploying data so that I am laying the groundwork on the legal and regulatory front? So that's a very long-term play. Absolutely. You know, I mean, and AI is another example. Nothing's gonna happen for a while, but you have to get in early Absolutely. to really shape the conversation uh, for when something does happen. Conversely, in the States, they could get an idea and pass it next week, right? So in the States, it's like a rapid response kind of activity, you know, they're, yeah. and the States are looking at AI too. I mean, again, to use it as an example. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah we were on stage and we were actually talking about this idea of the biometric movement mm -hmm. and how at airlines, you can now just kind of walk through yeah. global entry and right. it's just recognizing you moving through. That's a scary thought, but that same concept starts to, I believe, allow the regulators to understand what is possible and hopefully create less friction for us. Yeah, you know, I, in my remarks this morning, I talked about how important it was for this industry to share their stories, including with us, because you got to make it real, yes. right? And, and it, you know, real stories are always more powerful. And when you're engaging with folks who don't really understand how it works, bringing it to life like that, is hugely important. Everyone likes to get through global entry more quickly, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah. You know, that, that that becomes a very good thing. And when we can tell stories about the way we're helping small businesses and give a real example, right? Everyone wants to help small Absolutely. businesses. So bringing this to life is, is so important and sort of partnering to get those stories 
is really important to us. Yeah. Speed is the name of the game. We understand that everything kind of ties to this frictionless speed. What is it really getting us to this, this speed environment? Embedded is all over the place. Yep. We use the term quite a bit. What does embedded mean to you from an innovation perspective as you witness kind of what everybody is talking about and how it ties to AI and the different products and services that we see here at the ETA? Yeah, no, embedded, right, is what it's all about. <laughs> I mean, it's why we, we launched a, a track, a specifically dedicated track uh, to embedded because it, it is, as you think about the future of payments and the things that are really gonna drive, um, embedded is uh, so critical. And, and you know, it comes back to where we started. Like when you think about, you know, we talked about consumers and you know, that consumers wanting uh, kind of speed, ease, frictionless experiences, secure experiences at the same time, Absolutely. but like easy, easy. The, the same is true when you think about businesses, right? You know, businesses don't, you know, particularly small businesses, you know, they want 10 pieces of software to manage 10 different activities plus like a payment solution. Yeah. You know, anything that can be done to really make them run more efficiently. Um, it, it, when, you, when you think about it, you're like, of course that's true, right? Of course they're looking for solutions I, you know, like pick your industry that let them, you know, schedule reservations, kind of manage their inventory and, and accept payments. Yeah. And, and so once you do that and make it more seamless, more frictionless for businesses, like, of course they, they adopt that. And so, um, you know, when I first started, it was learning the landscape and was reading about it. And four and a half years ago, you know, Embedded was at a different place than it is Absolutely. now. But I looked at that and I thought, well, yeah, of course we're going to see lots of that. Because it just makes sense when you're thinking about the user experience. Um, yes. uh, and we're seeing it, right? Absolutely. And here we are among so many innovators. Yes. And what are innovators doing? Once we've tasted what it's like to interact with an iPhone or... You don't have to, you have to make a payment at the station eventually. I mean, Tesla is a great example. Right. You just park your car, plug it in, and it bills you automatically. Right. It is highly embedded, the yeah. entire experience. Exactly. Data is flowing. We know AI is going to be hyper important to data. What is Jody most excited about over the next several years from an ETA perspective, but also industry perspective? Yeah. So I am, I, I am really excited. I, I'm excited about a couple of things. So... As we, as we talk about embedded, and you gave a great example of the Tesla, right? But I, as you think about those experiences that make life simpler, easier, yes. I'm excited about, I think for a while we called it the internet of things, and then we called it the internet of payments, and we talk about embedded, but like, you know, that, that, um, that innovation, you know, consumer expectation or business expectation cycle, I'm really excited to see where that goes in embedded. Um, because, I mean, to use a simple example, I'm terrible at paying attention to when I'm running low on gas. I'm actually really, <laughs> really terrible at it. And my car, my current car now tells me you're running low on gas. And yes. we'll say, do you want me to direct you to a gas station? And the answer is almost always yes, because in yeah. fact, I'm really low on gas. Um, but so I get there and I really want, to your point, to just be able to top up and go. Right. Exactly. And, and I know that's coming. and I know it's coming soon. Right. I, I you know, we, we talk about things like, um, you know, automatic ordering when you're out of milk or yeah. just think about how busy we all are and how uh, much nicer life would be if there's more that's automated, including the payment. Right. Yeah. Because you don't set out to make a payment, but you do want the milk to be full in the fridge, you want the car to be full of gas, yeah. you want you, you want your life, you know, to be easy. Uh, and and payments facilitates that and that embedded nature of payments um, will really facilitate that. So I'm really excited to, to see where that's going in the future. And then we're spending a lot of time on AI. Um, and I, I really, uh, it, it's a really exciting time and it's a technology that's still kind of in flux and being developed. Um, but there is so much I think our industry will be able to do with AI, um, assuming, assuming we kind of hone the technology and also that we get the regulatory backdrop right. It's going to be an important part. And so I'm really excited to see what, what happens with that. You know, I, oh, it, it's going to be a phenomenal time to witness kind of you know, the small stuff, we're able to not sweat it anymore. Yeah. You know, don't sweat the small stuff type thing. Right. <laughs> we don't have to sweat that to focus on larger things and yeah. initiatives in our lives. And you think about AI, we we're talking about writing earlier as an example. Yeah. You know, it's going to certainly make a lot of things better, mm -hmm. possibly be dangerous as we've even heard here at the ETA. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, the regulation is obviously there to help protect from those dangers. What are some of the largest dangers that you uh, believe will be, you know, luring in the background as we AI starts to launch in the future? Yeah, I, 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 so I'd say a couple things. So AI is a tool, like any tool, it's a technology tool. And you can use technology for good and you can use technology for bad. I, I think what's really captured people's attention about AI was, you know, generative AI suddenly became available like kind of quickly and that right um and and so people really quickly got a sense of the power of it and i think it 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 just um threw people off a little bit it was like whoa look at that and there are really cool things about it but you're right you know there's uh, there's dangerous things there are like awful people out there and they will use whatever technology is out there um to do you know we in this industry you know we we're so focused on fighting fraud yeah. Um, and, you know, because there are awful people out there doing awful things. And that's certainly going to be an issue with AI. There's no Absolutely. question. You know, it's a AI's ability to impersonate, um, you know, whether it's, you know, voices or it is going to is going to create issues. facial recognition. Now, it's, exactly. Becoming, we have it and that feels good. But then AI can just simulate my face yeah. and then where do we end up there so right so you you know you think a lot about uh deep fakes for example when you think about politics or you know we're talking about information that's being uh, put out that's not correct but but those kinds of issues are going to be issues for payments too there's Absolutely. no question the good news i will say is like the payments industry is brilliant right at taking technology and figuring out how you fight the fraudsters. And it's like constant, right? You you figure out how you fight it, they figure out a new way to do yeah. it, you figure out how you attack that. And that's certainly gonna be true um, as we see AI you know, more frequently deployed. Yeah, yeah. Battle um, between light and dark for it sure. It is true, yes, it's it is. true. And I, I think we take comfort in knowing at a place like this, all of the conversations that are happening, because these companies all already exist, is just the new day of battling those same characters. That, that's absolutely right. Yeah. And and our industry has such a deep commitment to that. You yes. know, like we know that trust is paramount. Uh, and if consumers don't trust, right, then, then you know, this, this industry can't do its job. And so I have every confidence that we will meet, you know, we will uh, we will meet that that challenge. Yes. But absolutely. it's going to be a real challenge. I mean, there's no question. Absolutely. We're all here to help. I know. <laughs> we can. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to keep doing it, too. And it's been uh, really amazing to see what the ETA has done, um, how it's continued to evolve. And of course, I appreciate you joining us today, Jody. So thank you so much. An amazing day, an amazing set of interviews. Uh, the series uh, would not have been the same without these folks and having to hear their voices. We learned about AI. We learned about a lot of different technologies, the embedded ecosystem, contactless payments, regulation, um, all the great things that the ETA does. Thank you so much and thanks for listening. If you want to learn about all things ETA and all of the interviews that we have hosted, please watch the podcast Embedded on Spotify, Apple. You can also find us on YouTube and all the social channels.